Today I've got a nice number theory problem to show everyone. So our goal is to find all natural numbers n such that the square root of 4n minus 7 over n plus 1 is a rational number. And we're going to use the following fact along the way. And that is for all integers a, b, x, y, the object ax plus by is a multiple of the GCD of a and b. So this can be found in maybe like a standard number theory course. I've got a whole playlist covering number theory if you guys are interested in that. This is related to something called Bezu's identity. All right, so let's get into it. So given the fact that I've got this fact on the board, we probably want to use it with the other two objects on the board, and that would be the numerator and the denominator. So let's do that in a way that we can maybe cancel out the ends. So we could do that with the following observation. If we take 4 times n plus 1, and then we subtract 4n minus 7, which is the same thing as adding 4n minus 7 times negative 1, what will we get? We'll have 4 minus negative 7 or 11. So by our fact over here, this is equal to a multiple of the GCD of these two numbers, n plus 1 and 4n minus 7. But now we can rephrase that as follows. So we've got the GCD of n plus 1 and 4n plus 7 divides 11. So this divisibility relationship is exactly equal to saying that it's a multiple of the GCD. Okay, but notice that 11 is a prime and there are only two things that define, divide prime numbers. That's the prime number itself and 1 and 4n minus 7 divides 11. So that's just rewriting what I've got up there in yellow. But now 11 is a prime number, and every prime number has exactly two divisors, one and itself. So that breaks us into two cases. So we've got the GCD of n plus 1 and 4n minus 7 must come from the set 1 or 11. Again, those are the only divisors of 11. So let's break this down into cases. So maybe case number one will be what if these are relatively prime? In other words, we have the GCD of n plus 1 and 4n minus 7 is in fact equal to 1. Now let's notice that this condition along with the fact that the square root of 4n minus 7 over n plus 1 is a rational number tells us that 4n minus 7 over n plus 1 is equal to x squared over y squared with the GCD of x and y is 1. Actually, we can write this without using the fact that the GCD of these two numbers is 1. But now we can use the fact that the GCD of these two numbers is 1 to set 4n minus 7 equal to x squared and n plus 1 equal to y squared. That's because there's nothing to cancel out on either side of this equation. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So we'll take these two equations and plug them back up here and see what we have. So that'll give us 4y squared minus x squared equals 11. But we can factor that. Notice that factors as 2y minus x times 2y plus x equals 11. But now 11 only factors one way, and that's 1 times 11. So this really breaks into two more cases. We have 2y minus x equals 1, and 2y plus x equals 11, or vice versa. I'll just check this one, and I'll let you check the other one. So now we need to solve this equation for x and y, but we really only need to solve it for y, because if we have y, we have n. And once we have n, we can check if we actually have a solution. Okay, so how can we easily solve for y? Maybe we'll add these two equations. Notice that gives us 4y equals 12. In other words, it gives us y equals 3. But now if y equals 3, what do we have? We have n equals 8. But now if n equals 8, let's see what this thing turns into. 
That'll be the square root of four times eight is 32 minus seven is 25 over eight plus one is nine, but that's exactly five over three. So in fact, we got a rational number in this case. So n equals eight indeed is a solution to this problem. But that's only based off this first case where the GCD was one. Let's look at the case if the GCD is 11. So we argued that the GCD of n plus one and four n minus seven could only be 11 or one. In the case that we had it equal to one, we saw that we had a solution n equals eight, which represented this object being equal to five over three, which is a rational number. Now we're ready to look at this second case where the GCD is 11. So if the GCD is 11, following a similar strategy to what we did before, we can write 4n minus 7 as 11x squared, and then n plus 1 as 11y squared. And that's, of course, where x squared and y squared are relatively prime. But now we can take this and plug it up into this equation. And that'll leave us with something like 44y squared minus 11x squared equals 11. Now we can divide this whole thing by 11, making some simplification. That'll give us something like 2y squared minus x squared equals 1. Now we can similarly factor as before, so that'll give us 2y minus x times 2y plus x equals 1. But the only way to multiply two integers and get 1 is for both of them to be 1 or both of them to be negative 1. But that means these two guys must be equal. If these two are equal, that tells us that x has to be equal to 0. We can see that just by setting this guy equal to this guy and subtracting the 2y. But if x equals 0 plugged back up into this equation, we see that 4y squared equals 1, which has no solution since our value of y must come from the integers. So that tells us that in the end, we have no solution in this GCD equals 11 case, which means our only solution was the N equals eight case that we saw before. And that's a good place to stop.